Hello there, my name is Adam Vokte and in this video I'm going to show you how to properly fight as an Achillobator, or at least what we think how we should fight so far. This dinosaur got released not too long ago, so we are still in the what I would say is the figuring things out period. Now my time with this creature are definitely limited and so are probably all of yours. However, if you have figured out other strategies that work really well, then tell me about it down below. Now any future update may change the way you play as this creature, so do keep that in mind. In this video we'll be going over the arsenal of the creature, the subspecies you should choose to grow, the terrain compatibility and its fighting style, and of course the fight you can find yourself in, and at the end I'll summarize. For head abilities we have a few options, three of them to be exact. The first one is the oldie but the goodie. The standard bite that doesn't really have anything more to its name. Next ability, Raptor Strike, a quick attack that increases power with each hit. The closest thing you'll have for a spammable attack. The third ability, a new ability, Shred. It's a powerful attack that can only be used when pounced on an enemy. And while it does say powerful attack, I'm pretty sure most Apexes are probably just gonna shrug it off. We have three options for sensibilities. The first one being Hunter Instinct, that increases land movement when you're not in combat. Now you have a reason to be a pacifist. The second ability are Mob Boss, basically making you the Akusa over all smaller raptors. However, this ability basically makes you hate your own kind. The moment another Achilles joins the group, the ability deactivates. There can only be one Mafia boss. If anything, it feels like the Achillo are supposed to be more of a uh, supporter raptor class, boosting the abilities of smaller raptors and then occasionally lend a hand or claw. In other words, I don't really think it's supposed to be on the front line, but you know what? This creature is still rather fairly new, so uh, I'll let that be up for debate. The third ability are just a lone hunter that increases your attack when you're not in the group. For frontline abilities, we have two options. The first one being Cruel Swipe. This ability deals even more damage to a heavier opponent. The second claw ability does medium damage, but it does additional damage if you're pounced on an enemy. Again, we have three options for hide abilities. The first one being Strength in Numbers. Do pay in mind that it says nearby small raptors in your group, so that means probably not Achilles. Also, it does say in group, so I'm pretty sure it means that it doesn't activate when you're not in group. The second ability are Hollow Balls that basically make every Olympic jumper jealous of you. The third ability, Survival of the Fittest. This increases your speed if you're under the status effect of Bleed and or Venom. This does not activate when you're in group. Wait, so what happens if you're affected by both Bleed and Venom? We have two slots for leg abilities, so that means we can equip two, and we have three options. The first one being Leader of the Pack. When grouped with other smaller raptors, this increases your speed and also boosts their jump height. And like usual, you have a complete disdain for your own kind. The second ability are just the normal pounds. I will say it was nice of them to add more to the description. And as you can see, the ability only works on creatures like your mother. The third ability is a fly kick ability that goes so hard it causes menstruation to everything you hit. Doesn't matter if it's male or female. Those kicks are rated E for everyone. We have two options for tail ability, the first one being Catabalance that just lessens your stamina drain. The second ability are Rudder, that improves jump control, reduces fall damage, and reduces stamina cost for jumping by 50%. That's a discounted price and you don't even need to apply for a membership. Triple option for the voice, first one being Bark Bark Bark. Attack goes up, stamina down, stack it up 10 times. Shit that didn't rhyme. Panicking sprint, stamina gain. Attackers close by give less pain. Last one, hear that war cry. Someone is about to die. Stamina and armor increase for the bros, but not to your own kind, they are all hoes. The arsenal depends on how you plan to fight. For example, the one you see on screen right now are invested more for bleeding your enemies. This arsenal will be very suited towards enemies of higher stats. In a head-on-head -head battle stat against stat, you are probably gonna lose against a higher stat opponent. So might as well just bleed him out. This arsenal are better suited if you plan to be a pouncer. Do keep in mind that by being a pouncer, you are better suited for a more group sort of play. It's not easy to be a solo pouncing Achillobator. Your sensibilities and your voice abilities will change depending on your situation. You're just gonna have to figure that one on the fly. There's no real answer to this one. Honestly, I think it's a bit too early to say which subspecies are the best one. I will however say my opinion on this, and my opinion is that 
50% acceleration are the best suited for combat wise at least. You see, when after you pound someone, when you jump off your opponent, you are vulnerable for attacks. What sets the Akilo apart from the other raptors is that Akilos doesn't have that fan speedy thing for the tail abilities, meaning he can't just zoom out of danger after he's done with an attack. This is why you need the acceleration to be able to get you out of harm's way. At least that's my opinion. If you think otherwise, then meh. As far as terrain compatibility for the Achilles, I say he's pretty all-rounder. I mean, he's just a bigger, meaner raptor. You just need to adjust to your situation. With the exception of low tears. The fighting style of the Achilles are definitely more revolved around being a bleeder and a pouncer. Because of this, the Akilo needs a lot of room to be able to move, an enclosed area will not work well for him since you know his its movement will be more limited and it, it will be easier for your opponent to keep track of you and counterattack. That means that... Oh come on, how did you miss that? Probably doesn't come as a surprise, but I should probably mention that the Akilo are small enough to be grabbed by a Sarko. You know, just in case, and if you do get dragged into water, then you might as well kiss life goodbye. You are out of your element, and you're just crocodile food. Skill issue. I said before that I absolutely disdain fighting Lothir as a Lothir, and I still stand by that. A fight between Lothirs are usually a high speed fight. They become even more annoying on laggy servers. It's so difficult to hit your opponent. To prevent that, instead of speeding up, you should slow down. Now this is a fight between the same stat dinosaur, meaning that this is a competition on who can get more hits in first. Be that as it may, you should always try and tail ride your opponent. Stat doesn't matter, you should just do it out of principle, and to secure best odds for winning. Like I said, it's all about that tail riding. And in that sense, the general strategy against the other tiers aren't that much different. To be completely honest, I think the Akilo are better suited to be a support dinosaur rather than on the front line, but that is not why we're here, so let's put him on the front line. You would think that because he's bigger than the Electrovenatrix, it would be more easier to deal with mid tiers compared to it. However, in my honest opinion, it is not that simple. Just because he's bigger means that he's not as fast and he's not that much stronger. If anything, his big size might work against him. I will show you guys why later, but for now, let's focus on the mid tier. Now, even though you aren't as fast as the Latvinatrix, you are smaller than the usual mid tiers, and that means you have a bit more maneuverability. In fights like this, it is best for you to apply the bleed effect on them and then just drag it out. Keep that bleed on them and then use your superior maneuverability to keep the fight going. However, keep in mind that dragged out fights may gather attention and some of them might kill your opponent faster than you can. Bottom line, it will be better to just fight mid tiers as a pack. But if you do insist on being stubborn, do what I say. Try to keep the bleed on your opponent, use your superior maneuverability to outflank them, try and bait them to do an attack and when in their cooldown, that's when you attack. Of course you can't be stupid either. Your opponent's damage output are higher than yours and if they do land a fatal blow, then it's better to just leave. It will also be in your best interest to leave if he backs himself into a corner. Without a pack, it will be difficult for you to attack properly without receiving a fatal blow yourself. When it comes to fighting Apexes, oh, that is something you definitely shouldn't do alone. Even as a pack, it's difficult for you to take on an Apex. And when I talked earlier about how your size makes you a bigger target, this is what I mean. When you pound someone, being a bigger target means it's easier for opponent to counterattack. This is even more lethal if you jump closer to their main weapon. Not to mention, 
you hardly do any real damage, especially if you're alone. This is what I mean with that the Achillivator aren't really suited to be on the front line. He's too big and too easy to hit for Apexes, so rather than doing it himself, he should send in his army. And that is probably what the devs thought of too, because a lot of his abilities are meant to boost the other raptors. Oh yeah, and that stomp ability hurts a lot. Like you saw in the beginning, it would be better for you to team up with other raptors, and then together just jump the poor soul. So to summarize, against low tears, try the tail ride as much as you can, and win the competition who can get more hits in first. Against mid tears, lead your opponent, and then use your superior maneuverability to drag out the fight. Against apexes, don't fight them alone, fight them in groups, and then you can combine the both bleeding and pouncing. If you have any specific issue you want me to cover, go to my community post. Just look for the most recent post about the matter, and the information should stay right there. With that, I bid you guys adieu, and I will see you guys later. Goodbye!